Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Assalamu alaikum. I hope everyone is doing great. And uh, I am recording this lecture on demand. And this lecture is about objective, the objective questions you will get in your federal board's exam. According to my understanding, if you prepare these 11 to 12 things, your uh, objective paper, you, you can clearly score 15 by 15 marks in your English exam at SSC level 1 and 2 as well. Uh, the first question you have to prepare is of transitional devices. What is transitional devices? There are like three to four kinds of transitional devices that have been expected to prepare from you guys that are transitional device of addition, conclusion, sequence, cause and effect, contrast. This is pretty much the devices you have to prepare for your exam. At the same time, you have to prepare for yonas. What is yonas? Yona means the text lie under fiction, non-fiction, and the further subtypes of these uh, yonas. Next comes figure of speech. What do you understand from figure of speech? Figure of speech are devices that are used to enhance or that are used to beautify text, such as simile metaphor personification so far and so on here is a list of figure of speech and i hope you guys must have come across these names uh, during uh, your lectures parts of speech parts of speech are quite common you already know about it uh, and you have to prepare parts of speech along with along with the exercises Moving towards senten uh, sentences and kinds, what are the kinds of sentences? Affirmative sentence, interrogative, imperative, exclamatory. Okay, and what are types of sentences? Simple, compound sentence, complex sentence. What are context clues? Context clues are the clues that you are supposed to uh, figure out the meaning while reading the text. Analogies. Okay, this question, this question is particularly uh, for grade 10th. Uh, if you are a student of grade 10th, then you come across this questions. What are analogies? Analogies are making odd comparisons. For, uh, for example, if you get um, a question day is tonight as up is to dash now what you are supposed to put in just find the relation this day and night these are opposites hence what is the opposite of up it's down again you will get a question like um, Com, for example, com is used to brush here. Thread is used to. The answer is soup. You have to find the relation and then answer it accordingly. The next question. Is about gerund and participle. What do you understand from these terms? Gerund is verbal noun. It, for example, what is paint? Paint is a verb. Paint, painted, painted. And it's uh, gerund always come in ing form. If I write it, painting is my hobby. In this sentence, I am using this word painting as as a noun as a subject position hence this is an example of gerund on the other hand participle what is participle participle is gerund adject uh, verbal adjective Participles has two types present participle and past participle what is present participle pa present participles comes in ing form and past participles comes in third form what are examples of present and past participle? The example of present participle is, for example, 
kids like flying kites here in this sentence verb is like and uh, kites is noun according to parts of speech and which kind of uh, kites kids like flying so flying in this sentence is an example of participle on the other hand i have eaten a burnt sandwich this word burnt is verb according to parts of speech but here sandwich is noun and we know any word that modifies noun is called adjective hence this is example of participle moving towards phrase and clause phrase is a group of words that conveys partial meaning and uh, it has no no subject um, and predi uh, uh, no subject and verb on the other hand clause is um ag again a group of words having subject and predicate and clause has two types the dependent independent clause that is also called main clause or principal clause and dependent clause in independent clause we can use independent clause as a sentence on the other hand dependent clauses um we cannot choose dependent clause as a sentence moving towards the next question of that is of prefix and suffix what is prefix you guys have already uh, read it in physics when a word comes before for example there is a word uh, for example there is a word able and we put un at its back which completely changes the meaning of this word able this is an example of prefix on the other hand we have some words for example knowledge and from this knowledge if we put able at its back then it's become knowledgeable and it's the example of suffix i hope this thing is pretty much clear um in now let's look at the paper of faddle board that paper will also help you to understand which kind of questions you will get in your exam okay let's look here this first question um you will get 15 questions uh of mcqs inshallah and uh, before going to words mcqs first look here uh my students already know the pattern of english paper in english paper the first the the second question or you can say the first question of part b is of comprehension passage and this question is of 18 marks out of 18 marks the six marks are for summary and out of these six marks one marks is for title and five marks are for summary on the other hand you are supposed to attempt four question each question carry three marks four into three twelve and six eighteen this question carries eighteen marks moving towards the next question the second question is of the third question part a is about paraphrasing you have uh, you will be given a stanza um if you are following the book of ptb and there are two poems in ptb the first one is fifth chapter the fiddles and the second one is eighth chapter stopping by woods on a snow evening by robert frost and if you are following the book of kpk kpk has four poems the fun, first one is fourth chapter again the fiddles the second one is eighth chapter uh, hope is a thing with feathers and the third one is 12th chapter the old woman and fourth one is abu ben adam that is 15th chapter so you will get any paraphrasing any stanza from these um five poems and you are supposed to paraphrase that and yes uh, you have to keep in mind three things while paraphrasing you are not supposed to write down the context separately but you have to divide your paraphrasing in three parts the first part contains context in which you tell uh, who is the writer from which a poem the stanza has been taken and which kind of poem uh, is it in the second phase you are going to discuss the content what is exactly the stanza saying and in the third part you will be discussing figure of speech and rhyme scheme rhythm whatever thing whatever figurative devices has been there and you can amalgamate second part content with figure of speech and rhyme scheme as well 
the next part 3b is about questions you will get you will be given a separate stanza and you will be given uh, three questions of two marks maybe you will be given five questions of uh, three qu uh, four questions of one marks and one question of two marks you will be given six marks questions moving towards and these questions are related to a uh, figure of speech or uh, content or vocabulary or any kind of such thing moving towards the next part next part contains uh, three uh, next question contains three part first question is about voice change the voice active passive you will be given a sentence yeah, or a paragraph in passive voice or you have to supposed to change the voice in uh, and change that into active or maybe you will be given uh, five to seven sentences and you will be supposed to uh, change the voice uh, you uh, change the sentences from present uh, from active voice to passive voice the next question is put the correct form of the verbs this question also carries five marks and in this question um, you are supposed to put the correct form of the verb there will be hints there will be clues you are supposed to figure you are supposed to find those hints out you're supposed to decode the text and then you will be inshallah solving this question and you will also get questions do uh, do as directed at this part for example you may get a sentence i may not go to school and the option you get is change it into past simple tense you will simply uh, use the second form i might not go to school this kind of question will also come at this part and the last question is of punctuation this uh, this uh, again question carries three marks you have to learn the rules of uh, uh, punctuation rules of capitalization and uh, cor uh, correction analysis in order to understand this thing yes i was missing a thing here and i was thinking that which thing i have missed here here comes correction analysis next you will get a fifth question um this question uh, in in this question you can get uh two things out of these three the first one is email writing the second one is application writing and third one is letter writing out of these three things you will get two things maybe you get email and application and you guys already know the pattern here you can see that as well um and the last question is of six marks uh, there are two questions there are two more questions both are of six marks the first one is about paragraph you will get two paragraphs on any topic for instance these paragraphs should be from your uh, could be from your book for instance uh, in your ptb's book there is uh, girl's guide or my school visit to museum pakistani women you can get these kind of question uh, paragraphs or again you can get uh, paragraphs on current issues such as for example you can get a narrative essay on uh, gaza war or uh, uh, pros and cons of technology last time you get a question uh, nature the best healer this can be uh, from uh, you can prepare this question from ptb's books uh, chapter number 13 so this is pretty much all about this is pretty much all about the paper pattern let's move towards the objective part firstly inshallah inshallah you will get this kind of paper and uh, you have uh, you will be given a variant number this would be your uh, notebook number on which answer sheet number on which you will be writing your answers and uh, for example your variant number is 7431 and uh, you are supposed to properly bubble it out uh, i have used a highlighter here this is why this is not properly bubbled you have to properly bubble it with marker um whatever the digits you get you have to bubble that accordingly and then you will be given your uh, roll number you have your roll number sheet uh, uh, along with you uh, bubble your roll number uh, this way and then comes the part of objective here you can see um i have deduced uh, all the information from this very part and uh, this question is very important very important sometimes what student uh, what students do is they firstly start encircling their work with lead pencil but you do not have 
एम्पल टाइम टू डू दैट आपके पास इतना वक्त नहीं होगा कि आप पहले पेंसिल से उसको सर्कल करें फिर रेस कर करके आप उसको बबल करते रहें तो सोच समझ के निशानात लगाएं और एक ही दफा उसको प्रॉपरली बबल करें डू नॉट यूज लेट पेंसिल बिकॉज वट एवर यू राइट विद लेट पेंसिल दैट कैन नॉट बी कंसिडर्ड अगेन दिस इज ऑल्सो एन इम्पोर्टेंट इंस्ट्रक्शन डिलीटिंग एंड ओवर राइटिंग जो आप करते हैं एक जगह से काट के दूसरी जगह पर लिख देते हैं दैट इज ऑल्सो नॉट एक्सेप्टेबल ओके द लुक एट द फर्स्ट क्वेश्चन फर्स्ट क्वेश्चन इज अबाउट ट्रांजिशनल डिवाइस विच वी हैव ऑलरेडी डिस्कस इट्स ट्रांजिशनल डिवाइस ऑफ सीक्वेंस सो वट इज सीक्वेंस देर आर सर्टन वर्ड्स दैट आर यूज टू शो द सीक्वेंस फॉर एग्जाम्पल फर्स्टली सेकेंडली और आफ्टर वर्ड्स नेक्स्ट दीज वर्ड्स आर यूज um sometimes we use therefore in sequence as well and sometimes it's used in cause and effect so look at the first sentence he always comes he always comes late this is, there is no transitional device used in this sentence look at the second one he is honest but his friend is not this is transitional device of comparison and this cannot fit this is transitional device but this cannot fit in the transitional device of sequences sequence The third one is in brief. This is also transitional device, but this is transitional device of conclusion. Look at the last one. He was late, therefore he was punished. First he was late, and then he was punished. This is the correct option. The second one is narrative literature. What is this question is from Yoner. What is Yoner? As I have discussed earlier, Yoner is about fiction or uh, the text is fiction or non-fiction. In fiction, comes three part. For example, poetry or novel, um, and then drama. And in non-fiction, uh, essays or speeches. These are uh, biography and autobiography. These comes under non-fiction. So narrative literature. Created from the imagination, not presented as fact, or it may be based on true story or situation. This is example of fiction. Poetry, you all know, is written in lyrical form. Myth is um, the man gharat story, जो आप खुद से जिसका कोई भी पीछे background ना हो, वो होता है. And legend is larger than life's theme. If you are uh, if you are interested in watching Bollywood, just as Salman Khan ka character hota hai, uh, he keeps getting injuries, but at the end he always wins. So this kind of character is legend. Then uh, comes um, recognize the use of personification. Personification comes under figure of speech, or you can also say literary device. In one of the following sentences, the story jumped off. What is personification? Giving human qualities to non-human things. It could be living. It could be non-living. So the story is um, jumped off. This is jumping off as human quality, and we are giving it to story. Hence, it is example of personification. Look at the next sen uh, sentence. Uh, next option. This is uh, as this as suggests. This is an example of simile. and he is a moon for his mother this is example of metaphor she is thin like a string this is again this is again uh, example of simile moving toward next question the debris on the stadium what is the meaning of debris you have this is context clue you have to read the statement out and then uh, try to guess the meaning of debris so the debris on the stadium floor included numerous paper cups ticket stubs and cigarette butts the underlined word refers to um uh, they are asking about the meaning of the underlined word debris wreckage uh, wreckage means tabahi this is uh, the meaning of debris is not wreckage splinters again is uh, not the exact meaning the exact meaning is trash uh there might a question comes in your mind trash how trash is different from garbage so trash is like mm, dry waste dry waste is trash uh, such as papers or such kind of waste on the other hand garbage contains peels of fruits and vegetables uh the 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 waste material of home is called garbage and in schools it's called trash so the next one is can you deduce deduce means to uh, guess and infer means to deduce this is again context clue or vocabulary 
again mr alice is a snake um this is not used in a literal meaning this is used as uh, metaphorical meaning you should never be, uh, be aware of him negative connotation of negative means the negative side of this connotation the first one is cunning cunning um it could be it it is the quality of snake uh, poisonous it is literal meaning it is metaphorical meaning it is literal meaning cheater cheater is this is the exact word because cunning we can uh, say cunning is slightly better than cheater and scaly again it is literal quality scaly means the rough scaly surface so these two options are literal and uh, this sentence is example of metaphor we have not used it in literal meaning moving towards the next question which one of the following is correct word that means water tank for fish okay uh, uh, this is the example of prefix and suffix in this uh, they are saying that uh, they have given you this word and they are asking for meaning and, and the stem word of that word is aqua so aquaria aquatic aquatic means related to water aqua plane it's um, basically the base of boat aquarius aquarius is again not aquaria is the correct option why aquaria is the correct option because it is the plural of aquarium let's write a red let's write it here plural of aquarium and aquarium means a place a tank in which fish lives moving towards the next question it is a uh, example of model verb and again model verbs come un under a uh, form of verbs uh, not forms of verb it comes under uh, parts of speech if you prepare that um, if you prepare parts of speech uh, in detail you can able to solve this question so what are basically model verbs model verbs are the verbs that are used to ask for permission or that are used to show ability or uh, that are used to ask for help uh, look at the first uh, first uh, what they are saying they are saying to find out the model verb of ability that shows ability look at the first one you need not worry Next, uh, there is model verb, but uh, that is model verb of advice or suggestion. Look at the second one. I tried my best, but could not pick it up. This shows the ability. Uh, the third one is you have to leave this place. This is model verb of order or advice. And may I come in? This is model verb of request. Hence, the second one shows the model verb of um, ability. Moving towards the next one, which one of the following sentences has the use of transitive verb? First, you need to understand what are transitive verbs. Transitive verbs are the verbs that carry direct object at its end. What do I mean by direct object? By direct object, I mean that there should be no preposition before the object. Let's look here. Um, which one of the following sentences has the use of transitive verb? The train arrives at 3 p.m. This at is uh, a preposition. Hence, this is not the example. Sorry, but I have to leave again to his preposition. This is also not uh, the example of... Uh, this is also not the example of uh, transitive verb. Look here. She lives on the east side. This is again... Uh, example of intransitive verb both uh, prep uh, there are two objects and both are indirect objects and look at the last one she left the keys this is the exact option because the keys this is direct object and on the table this is indirect object if you get direct and indirect both objects in your sentence then you have to focus on the direct one and this is example of transitive verb Moving towards 10th question, identify the preposition of time. Preposition of time, there are uh, different types of, uh, types of prepositions such as preposition of time, preposition of place. So look at the first one, the bank is on the facile lane. Lane is place. So this is preposition of time, uh, place. Hence, this is not the correct option. He left for Karachi. Now again, it's uh, time, but the, uh, it's place, but on Monday. This is preposition of time this is the correct option on bed rest 
again this is place on the other side of the fence this is again the place identify the indefinite pronoun again this is a parts of speech indefinite pronouns are the pronouns in which we do not sure about the person uh, who is performing some action for example we use words uh, such as somebody nobody everybody so look here i did this work myself this is example of reflexive pronoun this is not my fault this is example of personal pronoun no one could answer this is example this is the correct option this is the example of indefinite pronoun and the last one is which is the shortest way to the zoo this is example of interrogative pronoun again this is this has come from adjectives and again adjectives comes under parts of speech so you have to prepare parts of speech in detail the first one is sort out adjective of quantity from the following sentences some uh, first one is some people some people do not come under uh, adjective of quantity because people are not uh, we can count people but they are not measurable he bought some sugar this this is example of quantity um, the next one is some books again this is not the example and last one is something went wrong it is also not the example so this is the right option moving towards the 13th question uh, find out abstract noun what is abstract noun abstract noun is an idea abstract noun is an is uh, an emotion feeling uh, concept that is in your mind that is in your head you cannot touch that thing out honesty again honesty is an abstract noun because it's an idea it's a concept and it varies from person to person humpty dumpty humpty dumpty is a proper noun he found water he is personal pronoun and give me your pen again and uh, this is your uh, give me your pen this is again pronouns so the example of uh, example of abstract noun is uh, honesty now look at the 14 one which of the following is a complex sentence firstly you need to understand what is complex sentence complex sentence is a sentence which contains two clauses the first one is dependent uh, the one among them is dependent clause and the other one is independent clause independent clause is the clause that we can take as a sentence but the dependent clause depends on the independent clause to convey the complete meaning look at the first sentence this is an example of simple sentence he is doing his work because this is just a one clause look here this is stay here or go to your home this is again example of compound sentence how the first one is imperative imperative sentence conveying the complete meaning and second one is also the imperative sentence conveying the complete meaning stay here go to your home both are conveying the complete meaning this is not the example of compound sentence now look if he comes now this is the example of uh, complex sentence because if he comes is not conveying the complete meaning i will go i will go is com conveying complete meaning this is independent clause and this is dependent clause i bought ticket and boarded the train this is again an example of simple sentence now look at the last one which one of the following sentences has an adjective phrase first first understand what is phrase phrase is a group of word that gives partial information and now they are asking about adjective phrase now we have combined these two things what is adjective adjective modifies noun and what is phrase it's part a group of words so what is adjective phrase a group of words that adds in the meaning of noun now look at the first one he bought a car what is a car it's a noun of which type of car he bought of a new model now of a new model this word is adding in the meaning this word is adding in the meaning of car hence this is example of adjective phrase moving towards the next question the dog chased him where everywhere so this is example of adverb phrase he wanted to go where home this is again adding in the meaning of verb hence this is example of adverb phrase again the kite flies up and up where is kite flying up and up this is again example of adverb phrase the first one is example of adjective phrase i hope everything is clear so far this is your paper you can check it on the website of federal board inshallah so yes and um, i want to show you the other set as well 
so you know in these questions are very important to prepare which i have discussed earlier look here look at the second sentence this is figure of speech transitional device context clue transitive intransitive sentence transitional device genre figure of speech context clue context clue parts of speech noun number um, you can get this kind of questions select like the plural form of the uh, select like the plural form of the word aluminous this is alumni so you have to prepare noun number noun gender types of sentence again uh, we have discussed it just a moment ago transitional device adjectives verb so this is pretty much all about uh, second set and now look at the paper of metric class this is the paper of metric class and look they have got the same kind of questions first one is parts of speech then again phrase adjective phrase again phrase adjective phrase uh, and correction analysis you have supposed to write down the correct word this is this d is the correct word context clues find out the meaning of the word given word again context clues you are supposed to write down the meaning after reading the sentence again context clues parts of speech type of sentence parts of speech part of speech part of speech figure of speech a lie has no legs human beings have legs lie have no legs this is the example of personification again look here a transitional device um parts of speech and last one is life is but a walking shadow this is taken from uh, Mac, uh, shakespeare's macbeth and this is example of metaphor so this is pretty much all about the objective of both classes inshallah you will able to do it if you do not understand anything i am just a comment away comment me and um, that is all thank you very much uh, take very good care of yourself and prepare hard for your exam and pray as well may allah help you and guide you in your exam signing off allah hafiz